All right, next up on the chopping block, Harvest Moon DS, Sunshine Islands. So uh, in the Harvest Moon double LP thread, I mentioned that this game was sort of basically the same as Island of Happiness. So, uh, someone corrected me and said, like superficially for the most part, they changed a few things, but generally this game is better than uh, Sunshine Island or um, Island of Happiness. Here's my various characters. Since it's not the same character, I actually have different saves here. I'm gonna start off with the early one. Just kind of show how the game is also stupid slow at the start. Can't use my phone. Got a super tiny shack. Or at least the calendar actually tells you things. Also, I do like that the top screen tells you where every character is. It's taking me a little bit to get used to the controls again. I want to do that. I always did like the music for this one, though. And I do like... One nice thing in this game, you can set the tools to... Uh, different buttons. Or rather, you set them to the same button, but you can switch between them. Once again, you immediately put everything in your rucksack. Even weeds. You do actually need to eat. If you look up, you'll see a fullness meter. The less full you are, the more uh, stamina you lose. Let's actually get a look of the farm. God, bugger all. <laughs> I think that's a bug, but I can't pick it up. You do get a stable, where you keep your pets. And we got one horse. Can't do anything with it right now. I still got a sled. This is how you practice for the festivals. Um, there will be different things in the back of the stable. In this case, since we only have a horse. And here you kind of need to... I think you need some timing. Go! 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 When you see the little uh, sweat coming up, that's where you need to shout. Go! Into your microphone. Test. And you need to get to the end until eventually you get to the goal. And the better, better you do it, the faster you do it, the tighter you do it the better your horse will be, and the uh, better they'll do at the races. Eventually, I can build an island over here. The point of this game is you need to find uh, sunshine stones. And when you've collected a certain amount, uh, you're able to have a new island come up out of the ground. You more or less have a choice of what that island is. The main reason this game is so slow is because it takes a while for you to do anything at the start. And the items that you need to really speed up the game are pretty expensive. So you spend a lot of the first year just kind of trudging along.
That said, I played this game a lot. There's a certain addictiveness of it. It's pretty indicative of just Harvest Moon in general. What kind of gesture was that? But, uh... For the most part, it's kind of the same as the original Harvest Moon DS. It depends on your tolerance for that kind of thing. And I immediately passed out. When you pass out, you just go straight to bed, so I probably lost some of those crops. What nice touches when you start, uh, start a day. Some of the um, food that you eat which is normally just kind of general animation that the game has. Just sort of a flavor, like in uh, Harvest Moon 64, you start the day eating some rice balls. But it doesn't really have an effect on anything. But uh, in this game, it actually does. That's another reason this game is so slow, you're constantly monitoring your stamina. But even when the game gives you the squares, like, the water will go here, I can still mess it up. Let's actually get off the farm and take a look around town. I think Taro's implied to be, like, a previous, um, protagonist. Characters say that, they never actually do anything. I do like that you can sell all the weeds if you want. You can sell basically everything. That doesn't mean it's worth a lot. Got a yellow wonderful. Yellow wonderfuls are different in this than in Tale of Two Towns. For this, you can actually equip them to your individual tools. As you can see, since that's the first hoe, it doesn't have a slot to put the Wonderful, so I need to hang on to it for later. I do like you can also get different stats, uh, depending on how fresh the item is, the general quality of it, and you get an item rank. If you get an item which is um, a uh, higher rank in, like, in quality, size, or freshness, and you put them together in your inventory, the items will stack and they'll actually average out the individual stats, which is a good way to keep items fresh. Like if you find new mushrooms out on, on Mushroom Island or what have you, and say in your refrigerator they're starting to get a little stale, if you put fresh ones in there, it, uh, the rank will go back up. Uh, hang on to the herbs. I'm probably not going to save this uh, particular game, so it doesn't really matter what I do. But since things start out pretty small, all of the things you forage for will be on, like, around the village. It's a pretty tiny island. I'm already out of space. I might as well just toss everything, then. Some of these things are pretty good for your health, though. Mm. 
Now I'm looking pretty good. Why don't I have enough free space? Oh, it's like the original Harvest Moon DS, you only get so much space. And you need to stack them individually, that's stupid. it'll do. Also, you can just bin things right away if you wanted. Let's take a look at this other island. You look really sad. I'm afraid you're a little late on that. That bird on his shoulder will actually talk sometimes. Not often, but sometimes. One of the things you really need to do is befriend absolutely everyone on the island. Every person you talk to, you need to find out what their favorite gifts are and give it to them. And also just talk to them every day. Because when you do that, that's how you unlock certain sunstones. But speaking of islands, let's get to the dock. We can actually show some of that off. Also, you see the cafe and the restaurant. The uh, people running those are the people that you give certain items to, and that's how you unlock recipes. Also, you need to be careful. You actually need to talk to that guy as well and befriend him. but you're most likely to just walk onto the dock and then get the option, you want to go here? And then say yes. I only just recently unlocked this area. Actually, I'm not even sure if this was actually my save file or was just what was on the the uh, cartridge. What a dick. He's a bachelor, by the way. Just some random jungle fella. I do like the music, though. It's relaxing. Also, this is annoying. These get in the way of some items sometimes. See, there was a... I think I picked up two things. And both times, they just kind of... They were hidden behind that thing. Two herbs, yeah.
This is yet another questionable, questionably designed Harvest Moon game. <clears throat> Meadow Island here. When we've unlocked Sunstones, we're able to come here. Then we can use them to unlock new islands. If I had just one more sunstone, I could unlock Link Island, which isn't really an island itself. It's just a platform to get to other islands. But again, you need, you need to uh, you need to unlock those islands as well. So, what are you gonna do? Oh, hey, look at this. You remember him from the latest Tale of Two Towns part. See if I can get a new recipe out of him. Oh yeah, this is the annoying thing. So you give him the ingredients, and it's only so likely that he'll actually do it right. Yeah, so I just wasted a mushroom on him. Those two are basically a couple. They're the fishing couple. Lana is actually a pop star. Of all things. This game starts out slow. Slow and kind of treacherous. But if anyone ever saw the live Jacob show video on the Midnight Frogs, you might recall that uh, Jacob found me and I was like on spot pass and I had been playing this game on the on the uh, flight over to Boston so I still play the shit out of this game but not sure I'd recommend it unless you're a hardcore Harvest Moon fan not sure I'd recommend it unless you just have the game facts open constantly and you look at that almost as much as you do the DS screen. Because you will be testing yourself. Also, there's really nothing on Lighthouse Island at the start. Not even a lighthouse. I think there's a sunstone here, but I probably already found it. Or whoever Aly Alyssa was.
Also, some people I haven't shown off are the Harvest Sprites. The more you befriend all of them, the more they unlock. And the more you can do with them. Odd. You know, basically have color names. Well, isn't that depressing? <laughs> if you just talk to these guys every day, just run through here and mash the button. You can unlock them with pretty much no effort. And I think if you just talk to one particular color of a Harvest Sprite, you've talked to all of that color. Which makes things a little easier. Oh, just past midnight. I don't think I have a chicken, so I don't know why you're coming here. Let's actually look at my save file. I'm already on year three. Like I said, I played this game a lot. And I have a much better house. A very slow opening cabinet. Must still be waiting to propose. That's not the problem with the early start of the game. You don't have a refrigerator, so you need to keep all of your shit in your rucksack. Do remember some of this stuff. You actually mine for gelatin in this game. Control stick is a little inaccurate. Kind of wonky. Got two beds and no one to share them with. set up a little fenced off area for my cows and my chickens. Keep them separate. Also got some more pets. Got a dog and a cat. Let's look at the dog festival training thing. Oh yeah, if your dog sucks, this ain't gonna be easy. You can tell how well your dog is gonna do by the expression. So he might actually do pretty well here. Here, he's not gonna do very well at all. That might be too far. Yep. Couldn't make that one. But the more training you do, the more you actually let your dog catch the frisbee, the better the, uh, the better the dog will be. The cat festival is absolute bullshit. The, the entire festival is getting your cat to notice you.
And you can only do it when the cat has actually noticed you. When it does the ellipses, it, start walk it starts walking away the more that you uh, swing the cat tail around. Also, I think you, I could actually have picked up the cat when it had that, uh, note over its head. I just didn't realize it, because it's a stupid-ass festival. Pretty sure there's another pet I can do, I, I think. Like a pig? Not sure. Chicken coop, much the same as all the other harvest moons. I don't like that the game has to ask me for permission. Seems a little tedious. Also, you notice a difference between the amount of chickens I have and the amount of feed troughs. You actually build individual feed troughs. You don't just get a new one every time you have a new animal. This game relies on you to make decisions for yourself a lot. And I think that cow is pregnant. <laughs> Good luck trying to feed your fucking cow when it's pregnant, because she's just good. She's just gonna sh sit here, and if you try to put the thing into the bin while facing forward, you're just gonna talk to the cow. You have to actually be facing at an angle. Leche is actually an old joke. If anyone had been around on older Midnight Frogs podcasts. I had a system down for watering this. Since I only have my... Uh, Watering can leveled up so that it can do two rows at a time. That means trying to do this, you gotta be kind of crafty in order to get them without wasting any water. But also be being uh, able to do it fast. Of course, the problem is I don't have my uh, hammer leveled up enough so I can get rid of these hunkin' things. I'm not exactly sure that I ever will. Can't get that bug. Bug catching didn't really have a purpose until later games. Also, inventory management slightly finicky. This is the maker shed. You have to make the individual makers as well. C 
seed makers is cool. That's how you get better quality crops. Oops. God damn it. It's the usual stuff. Also not sure if I'll ever get back to this game. At least not in any uh, serious capacity. But it's fun to show it off. If anything, this game is better than Harvest Moon DS. But again, as long as you actually have game facts open constantly. I don't know if you saw there, we might have been able to see the quality increase a little bit. So many things have been in here a long time. And when they get bad, the rank just really just drops dramatically. Um, I don't think that it, it, anything really goes rotten. Or if anything, it hasn't for me yet. But I don't know, I guess if I ever continue this story, well, I'll find out. I've unlocked a good bit more of the Harvest Sprites. Hmm, I'm superior? What? Yeah, the game is basically indefinite. Up here is, uh, Island for growing rice. In a new beginning, what you do is you just build your own little rice patties, and then you set them up at like the um the regular fields for growing uh, all the other crops, but it's just only certain things will grow on those. I do need to water these, I think. You end up doing a lot of work. And I'm out of water, so whatever. So look, look at that, I basically lost the entire day. But I think we have enough time to at least check out some of the other islands. I don't even remember which of these characters I'm supposed to be wooing. I think it's this guy. And probably not. Lily's a treasure hunter. Vaughn is a prick. Oh, it must be Denny. I didn't show off any glitches. I don't know any that are immediate. I did mention the one that breaks the game in Harvest Moon DS. Look at all these islands. So there's two islands over here. Mm-hmm. 
This is this one is for the church. I think both of these characters appear in Tale of Two Towns, but they don't show up until the second year. Oh, they reused a lot for a new beginning. And this here is the Witch Princess's house. The Witchkin, I think, is her little sister. You need a bunch of sunstones to unlock their islands, and each new island has sunstones you can find around them. Now, the Volcano Island is actually the mine. Which sounds stupid and dangerous, because it is. And look at that. Completely lost my stamina just from falling. Well, since I'm not really worried about saving shit. Just gonna take a bunch of herbs. And I'm just gonna go straight to the mine. I don't even remember what the herb soup was for. If it was for anything. Since today is a festival day, everyone's just going to be hanging out in their house. But I think you can still talk to them. die again. You can find the usual stuff around here. And then, perhaps the weirdest thing... Well, if I had water. Maybe I should have thought about that. But, you actually water these patches of lava, and that's how you get gelatin. I kind of wish I was kidding. You can tell how far you fell by how long the, um, the sound is. It's easier to get around the mine if you just go around this bit. This is also a good use of save scumming. Don't actually hit anything until like, you've saved the game, and then hit it, see if it actually produces something you want. Or just save, and then look around for a pitfall or for a stairs. It's a good way to make money, though. It's 
see if I can find another pitfall. There it is. Whoops. <laughs> Didn't mean to take that one. Oh. But still let me knock it out. Thanks. Mostly you get junk ore. You also get fluoride. Which is used quite a bit in, in uh, New Beginning. You gotta do a lot of inventory management, because all of these things have different qualities, sizes, and freshnesses. Freshnesses? Different levels of freshness. But that alone, like the little individual changes means it's technically a different item, so you need to stack them yourself to average it out. But you're looking at you can see the size, quality, and everything averaging. Not an emerald, that's cool. There's a lot of emeralds here. Let me get my stamina up. I'm just gonna see how far I can go down. I also unlocked Harvest Goddess Earrings, which restore stamina. So we just switch to that. They're not actually effective, though, or even useful. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna survive that one. Yep, there we go. Oh yeah, you do need to bring... I remember the basket. I don't know if I have that in this game. I might, I think it was just, like, just sitting outside. No, I was probably thinking of Harvest Moon DS, because there was a basket in that. But nope. Well, anyway, that's Sunshine Islands. It's kind of a tough one. Yeah, I think out of most of the portable games, um, Friends in Mineral Town is the only one that doesn't really beat the hell out of you right from the start. Mostly because there's actually a beehive, like, right on your farm that produces honey every single day. And you can always sell that, so you're constantly making money, even if it's not much. You're always increasing your funds, and it doesn't take forever to increase the size of your rucksack. Also, uh, Friends of Mineral Town didn't have qualities or freshnesses or whatever. So things actually stacked right from the start. Basically, Friends of Mineral Town is one of the best Harvest Moons. This one, not so much, but... Worth checking out, at least.